So my next speaker is Yves Pope from Tata, and he's going to talk to us about the evolution of uh, subsea in the Middle East. Thank you very much, John, and uh, first of all, thanks you. Thank you very much, Yusef, for inviting me to uh, speak uh, this morning. In fact, uh, I think I'm one of the two industry members uh, together with Rod. In fact, I think we are quite useful because we provide capacity and uh, Rod has some magic tricks to uh, increase the speeds all the time. With, when we think we'll reach the limit, then he adds another couple of uh, 100 gigabit of capacity per unit. And this is very interesting because in, in uh, going to government to get a new funding for Canary, the uh, Canadian Research and Education Network, you know, uh, <coughs> we, we told them uh, we have to uh, upgrade the network from, uh, from 10 gig to 100 gig. And then someone from government said, but why? you don't use that 10 gig capacity anyway. Why should we give you 100 gig? This is totally useless. You should stay with 10 gig. And then, of course, we told all the stories uh, about big science, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so they were finally convinced. Now, uh, of course, in uh, North America and some countries, uh, research and education networks get their dark fiber. So we don't depend from government that much anymore to go and justify why to go from uh, 10 to 100 or next uh, thing will be to go from 100 to 400 or maybe even a, a terabit. So this being said, the reality of interconnecting our e networks and all networks for that matter depends on capacity. And I would like to uh, share with you briefly this morning what has happened uh, over the last year on the capacity side. As uh, we know, we have been talking about connecting the uh, Arab r &E networks for quite a number of years. Uh, we promoted the al Khawarizmi concept in uh, the Gulf. In uh, parallel, there was the, and there is, the Dante Jayan funded uh, UMET Connect uh, connectivity. And uh, in fact, if you look at, uh, at the right side, the natural points to connect networks together depend on the topology of the cables. And it so happens that uh, the majority of cables have meet me points situated in, uh, in Fujairah, in uh, the United Arab Emirates, in uh, Jeddah, in uh, Saudi, and uh, in Alexandria. Obviously, most of the cables <coughs> go through Egypt the same way that the Suez Canal more than a century ago brought all the traffic here. Other aspect is uh, we cannot wait anymore. We can really finalize the topology of, uh, of the upcoming networks. And the reason is that the majority of the present generation cables have been built. And uh, here you will see that uh, on the uh, Europe-Asia side, on the Mediterranean side and the Middle East side, most cables have been built. The blue in here are the cables which are built. In uh, brown are the ones which will come online over the next two years. Uh, Oceania, you have uh, brown there because the two cables are in, in planning between uh, Australia and uh, Singapore. Transatlantic, you see two cables. Uh, one is the new uh, Emerald cable, and the other one is a, a new cable by Hibernia. The Hibernia cable has been delayed because of the controversy with uh, their choice of uh, Huawei equipment. As you know, the American government had some problems with the Huawei, so they had to select an other supplier. But all this being said, the uh, configurations and the topology of cables is quite uh, finalized at this point in time. If we see the lit capacity, of course there are two things in cables. One is the design capacity, and uh, the second element is the lit capacity. In fact, the rule of thumb for a very long international cable 
one third of the cost will be the cable itself, one third will be the installation of the cable, and one third will be the, uh, the optics to, to light that cable. And of course, if you have a big cable, you will not light too much, because if you light too much, you will deprice the price per megabit. So there is a little magic there to light enough to make the customers happy, but not too much to break your business model. So that's the secret. Please don't tell anyone how it works. And this being said, if, if you look at the regions and the evolution over the last 10, 15 years, you see that uh, at this point in time, we, we have had a quantum jump. Now, if one would extrapolate 2013, 2018, what would it look like? In fact, the, the magic here again is that with most of the existing cables, you could easily imagine another uh, times five of capacity, which would be quite uh, spectacular. And uh, again, there we depend on Rod to make that the reality. Now, if we look at the status this month, it's quite interesting. When I put uh, that graph together, or that, that list, I looked at the presentation I gave uh, last year, and in fact, in one year, the potential capacity more than doubled. In fact, now they don't talk about design capacity anymore, they talk about potential capacity. And uh, terabits are everywhere. I was telling the story yesterday when we designed CANTAT-3, transatlantic cable, in the mid-90s. It was a five gigabit cable, and uh, it was doubling the capacity under the Atlantic, costing $500 million. Engineering had said it will take 17 years to fill that cable, because their planning was based on uh, the growth in telephony. Now, there was a phenomenon which happened in the meantime, which is called internet. And the consultant had told us that internet is a game for universities. It has no quality of service. It has no billing system. And it's totally unreliable. So we said, you're absolutely correct. One has to stay with ISDN and broadband ISDN. And we know how history has evolved in the meantime. So we have CMUE4, we have IMIWE, we have TGNEA, which is uh, our Tata cable, which goes from uh, Mumbai to Marseille, TGN Gulf, again, you can read all these capacities, GBI, also in the Gulf, FLAG, also in the Gulf, EGI, the uh, Europe cable, uh, which uh, came uh, online in uh, January of uh, 2012, very nice cable also. Then there's the MENA, uh, the Middle East to Europe. That's a little bit of a sad story because they have had enormous problems to, uh, to get their Egypt crossing. And uh, now apparently it would be solved, uh, but uh, there's a lot of politics involved. I hope they will be able to uh, solve their problems. Then there's uh, the RCN and the JADI cable. Uh, Jadi, the, the Amman, Damas, to uh, Istanbul cable, and uh, of course with the situation in Syria, these cables uh, have been delayed. Then there's the EPEG. EPEG is uh, quite interesting because uh, it's a partially terrestrial cable which goes through Iran up all the way to uh, Germany. On the Mediterranean side, there's the, the Lucos cable, Morocco to Spain, late last year. There's a Jona cable, Israel to Italy, and there's Silphium, Libya to Greece. So uh, these are three nice cables. And of course, the tendency here is always to go north-south or to, to Europe. Planned for uh, this year and next, there's the Didon cable. Here uh, you have uh, Orange, Tunisia, and the Tunisiana who are cooperating on that cable. Should be ready uh, around May 2014. I don't know if anyone in the audience has an update on uh, the situation, if indeed it will come. Then there's uh, Alasia between Syria and uh, Cyprus. That's a huge capacity, 25 terabit they're calling. There's the Europa cable, Lebanon to uh, Cyprus. 
and then there's an Algeria-Spain cable, which uh, I don't know the situation uh, at this point in time, maybe someone here could help us out. To watch in the coming years, there's the RCN cable, there's the CMEW5 or AE1. In fact, in my opinion, only one of the two will be built, because there again, it's a matter of, uh, of pricing, it's a matter of demand, it's a matter of extrapolation. There's the BBG, the Bengal cable. Then there's the Meats cable. In fact, the Meats cable is a very interesting uh, phenomenon. Meats stands for uh, uh, Middle East Europe Terrestrial cable. And uh, this is a, a consortium in the Gulf, and uh, they banded together to build a cable going from, uh, from Fujairah to Kuwait using the GC GCC. GCC is the consortium of uh, the power companies interconnecting all over uh, the, the Gulf. So basically they will use the, the power lines and then the intention is to eventually extend via power lines all the way to, uh, to Turkey. And in fact, it makes me think, uh, I, I think Yusef, you remember when we first started Junet in, in Jordan, there was a study made uh, by the Canadian uh, International Development Agency, and they recommended to use the power grid as an alternative to, uh, to the traditional telecom carriers. And uh, in fact, I think part of your network is based on the grid, and it was a great success, and uh, congratulations to uh, Jordan for that one. And already in those days, uh, one of the recommendations was to eventually have a system like that going all the way from Morocco to uh, Turkey, uh, crossing all the countries in the Middle East. So maybe one day that will become reality. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. If we look at the geography, you all know the geography. And uh, here again, we have Lucas Didon, the Algerian cable, the Libyan cable. And of course, the big problem is we don't have systems which are within the North African side. Everything seems to go to Europe, and uh, Marseille seems to be a kind of a logical place for everyone to meet. We have the EIG cable, TGN, CMEWI, the MENA cable, EMEWI we're talking about, and uh, as you see, a lot of them go to Marseille. In the Gulf, we mentioned them. I think the Gulf is, is quite well connected. We had a discussion yesterday with uh, our friends from, from Iraq. How could we connect uh, Iraq? In fact, here you see on uh, the Iraq side, GBI, they extended their cable to Al Fall. Then uh, the Falcon cable goes uh, all the way. And uh, in fact, it would be a matter of connecting Al Fall to uh, Basra. I think the distance is, is not too uh, great. And then to my knowledge, there is a fiber optic cable going from Basra to uh, Baghdad, and then there's plan, I don't know if it's operational, I think you said it was operational to go from Baghdad to northern Iraq all the way to, uh, to Turkey. So the, the pieces are coming together. The, the one aspect which uh, is always key is how much does it cost? We also had a, a lot of discussions over the last two days of about the cost, and uh, there is a real need there to have the uh, research and education community talk to their regulators, telecom regulators, and to the telecom ministry. Because very often what happens if you ask for 100 gig, they don't have that in their price list. So the highest they have maybe is 10 gig, then they'll look at the 10 gig price and multiply it by 10, and then you will fall off your chair when you see the price. Then there's another aspect, which is politics, because everything goes in half circuits, and I heard the situation in, in the Gulf, where a quotation for one gig capacity from country X in the Gulf to the UK was the same price as going to the next country in the Gulf. So it doesn't make too much sense. So, so there, something has to give there. If not, you will never be able to really have local aggregation. Mm -hmm. Now, one of uh, the places we have promoted as a, 
natural aggregation place is uh, Fujera. Different reasons, one is the multiplicity of cables landing in Fujera. And the second reason is that uh, they decided that Fujera would become the smart hub, so a kind of a neutral zone where you can enter and exit the country without <coughs> being restricted to uh, half circuits. So that should bring the prices down. Looking at that, it would be a natural place to go and uh, connect networks from the east, from the west, from Africa, because in fact, if one looks at Kenet, which is the Kenya network, they have the capacity on the Teams cable, and they go from uh, Mombasa to Fujera, from Fujera to Europe. So why not break out a cable or one of these uh, connections they have in Fujera, and so they can connect to east and west from there. And same for the APEN countries, Spain, uh, etc., etc. So that would be the logical place. So that's one of the things to do. And uh, we already use the, uh, the Fujera hub for our commercial services, and uh, that uh, announces itself quite well. Here we're talking about IP transit and PLS and the Ethernet services. Participation in uh, R&E, again, I, I think from a, a Tata point of view, again, Tata has a long tradition in supporting research and education. Uh, in India, there's the Tata Institute for Fundamental Research, which is a research uh, center and university. They issue the degrees. Tata is involved in astronomy, in the Pune radio astronomy. There's the Tata Memorial Hospital, which is quite known in, uh, in India. And the Tata Group has a strong commitment to promote education in India and in all emerging countries. So in that context, we have been collaborating with the Gloriad, which is run by Greg Cole, who uh, quite a number of you know. And uh, this is a very nice project, which in fact started in the late 90s with connectivity between the US and the Russian Mirnet. And so this is one nice project. Other involvement is GLIF, the global, global Lambda Interconnect Facility, which started in 2001 between uh, Holland and uh, North America, we provided the first connectivity at the time. And in the meantime, I didn't count it, but I think we supply about uh, a half dozen of these very high speed circuits. And GLIF continues to uh, grow by leaps and bounds. Then uh, I think we'll hear more about it from, from Rod, what uh, we did earlier this year that was in the context of uh, the Tirina meeting in Maastricht, was the ANA 100, which in fact is the first uh, 100 gig connection across the Atlantic. We all thought at first it's a crazy idea. It was not obvious. In fact, uh, I think we all learned a lot of, of things doing that. And uh, in fact, my dream now would be to have a 100 gig trial between Fujera and, uh, and Europe. I, I think that would push the envelope and uh, wake everybody up and make some people proud and happy. So maybe something to plan for the next uh, Middle East Special Interest Group meeting. And eh, John? This is the, the configuration, uh, I will not go into it. So uh, it went to Maastricht for, uh, for the time of, uh, of the demo. Then the agreement was to leave the uh, setup for uh, one year. And in fact, it has been used for the supercomputing which uh, just took place. And uh, again, it works well and data gets transmitted. So give them capacity and they will fill it. So in conclusion, I think it's about time we connect our Arab networks amongst each other. Thank you. <laughs>